Break your Bibles, please, and turn to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. That's 1,335 in your Scofield Bible. Revelation chapter 5. We'll begin by reading one verse together, and then we'll turn to another passage. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Shall we stand together, please, for the reading of God's Word? And we'll read verse 12 in unison, please. Ready? Saying with a loud voice, The Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And now turn over, if you will, please, to Revelation chapter 22. And we'll read in unison the first three verses. Revelation 22 verses 1, 2, and 3. Ready? And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of the, and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Let's pray and let's ask God to bless this. Father, we thank you for bringing our preacher back with us. And Lord, we, we need him, and we're grateful for your protective hand upon him and the rest and, and uh, relaxation they were able to have. And, sure they're still a bit travel weary but Lord we pray for clearness of mind and, and then of course we pray for our own minds and our own hearts that we'll be clear and, and steadfast and listening and heeding what's given to us from the wonderful word of God bless it to our hearts and bless us as we serve thee and bless our service in Jesus name Amen I will not be using the tool of humor this morning as I often do, I'm going to bring a very serious, sobering kind of a sermon today. I'm going to read for you, just without your turning to it, one verse we read a while ago. The title of my sermon is twofold. I, you can call it, if you want to, The Coronation of the Lamb, or if you want to, you can call it Worthy is the Lamb. I read one verse saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I want you to notice that word worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. What does that word worthy mean? It means sufficient. That's what it means. Sufficient is the Lamb. I want you to look right this way for a minute. I'm going to make a statement that's going to shock you. There are literally millions of people. Listen, please do not take notes. I'm not, it's not a classroom. It's a sermon. Let's put your pens up and listen to me. There are millions of people in this world today who trusted Jesus will spend eternity in hell. Did you hear what I said? There are millions of people in this world who trusted Jesus will spend eternity in hell. I would be willing to, to, to venture there are scores of people in this room today who have trusted Jesus who will die without God and spend eternity in the lake of fire. Now, there are two types of people this morning in this room. There are those who are going to hear what I preach, and you're going to leave this place rejoicing and saying, Glory be to God, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Then there's a second group of people. The people in this room this morning are going to come to the realization that you've never, never been saved. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I just don't want anybody to sit in these pews and go from First Baptist Church in Hammond to hell. I want you to do that. So I want you to listen carefully as I speak on the subject, Worthy is the Lamb. Our Heavenly Father, bless me as I speak this morning. And our people and our guests, as they share with me this wonderful truth, please, in Jesus' name, amen. Starting just a trifle late this morning because of the preliminary remarks about our trip. It is now 
I promise you that you can rest at ease. But the gone is always. Our invitation will be over. We'll stop baptizing at before 12:30, and you'll be gone before 12:30. I likewise promise you that I'll be finished preaching before 12:10. So if it's about 12:05, you're wondering what in the world is this guy going to find a landing strip? I promise you, I'll be landed. We'll be at the gate by 12:10. So I want you just to sit still, and I want you to listen to me, and I want you to sort of examine yourself today as I speak on the subject, Worthy is the Lamb. Intently, I speak. Intensely, I speak. And intently, I ask you to listen to what I'm going to say this morning. The first Lamb hint given in the Bible is given in Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 7. It was when Abraham had taken his son Isaac up to Mount Moriah. They arrived at Mount Moriah, and Abraham was obeying the command of God to take the life of his son and offer his son as a sacrifice. God was testing the obedience and love of Abraham. Abraham and Isaac arrived at, the, at, the, at Mount Moriah, and Isaac asked the question, he said, here is the altar, and here is the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? For the first time, the word lamb is mentioned in the Bible. Where is the... Don't miss, don't leave me now. Abraham mentions the word lamb as the second time it's mentioned in the Bible. He says to Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb. Listen to me. Wake up. Listen to me. Abraham had been told by God that someday, mysteriously, God himself would be the lamb. And so we have the second time the word lamb is mentioned in the Bible. In our lamb progression, we come again to a place where the word lamb is mentioned. The third time in the Bible you find the word lamb mentioned is in Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 3 where God told Moses, listen carefully, God said to Moses, I want you to tell the people something for me. To every man a lamb. He said, I want you to tell, get, gather all the people together and tell the people that on a certain day, the 14th day of the first month, our month of April, a Passover lamb is going to come, uh, uh, the death angel is going to come, and the death angel is going to take the life of the firstborn, of every, child, of every family in Egypt. Now listen carefully. You understand what that means? That means in your case, Brother Jack, Jackson's wife will be taken. Is Mark your oldest child? That means that Mark will be taken. And every family, God said, that, that doesn't do what I say to do, the firstborn will be taken. Now don't miss this. He said, Abraham, I said uh, Moses tells the people, each, each the head of each house to choose a lamb. Now, he said, Moses, get this, get this correctly, because the life of the firstborn of every family depends on you getting the instructions carefully. And your, your eternity in heaven or hell depends on you getting God's instructions carefully also. And so he said, every man, for his, every head of every household will get a lamb. Now, he said, in the second place, that must be a male lamb. I'm sick and tired of these liberals talking about our mother, father, God. Uh, 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 no gender God. God is our heavenly father. He's not our heavenly mother. So he said, I want you to take a lamb, a male lamb. Now he said this, I want you to take a lamb without blemish. You must be careful. In fact, I want you to keep that lamb up for four days and be sure that that lamb is without blemish. You got that, Moses? Moses, the life of the firstborn depends on this. You got it, Moses? Choose a lamb. Okay, I got it. A lamb. Secondly, a male lamb. I got that. Third, a male lamb without blemish. Now he said, on the 14th day of the month, I want you to take that lamb and kill that lamb and take the blood of that lamb and put that blood on the doorpost of the house. Now on the 14th night, uh, the, death, the night of the 14th, the, the death angel is going to pass over. And the death angel passes over when he sees the blood of that lamb applied. Your firstborn will not be killed. You apply the blood of that lamb on the doorpost of your house, and Jackson will live. You apply the blood of that lamb on the doorpost of your house, and Mark will live. And Moses calls the people together and says to the people, Listen carefully. Listen carefully. The life of your firstborn is at stake. 
God told me several things. One, fathers, choose a lamb. Second, choose a male lamb. Third, choose a male lamb without blemish. Fourth, keep it up for four days and be sure it's without blemish. Fifth, on the first, fourteenth day of the first month, you kill that lamb and take the blood and apply that blood on the doorpost and the death angel is going to pass over. If that blood's applied, the death angel will not take your firstborn. Every house in the land of Egypt where the blood is not applied, the firstborn's life will be taken. And that means that the Baptist people without the blood applied would lose their firstborn. That means Methodist people, that he didn't say everybody joins the church, he said the blood's got to be applied. He didn't say everybody who lives a good life. He said, I'm sure that some of those Egyptian people lived better lives than some of the Jews did, but the Jews applied the blood. You're not going to go to heaven because you live a good life. It's because the blood of the Lamb of God is applied. We continue our discussion and progression of the Lamb. The question is why? Why the lamb? Why was the lamb chosen? Why was it a lamb for Isaac? And why was it a lamb for the Passover? We come in our progression to Leviticus 14, 12. At the changing of, at the cleansing of the leper, the priest shall take a lamb. The priest shall take a lamb. And the, lamb, the priest would take the blood of that lamb and sprinkle that blood upon the earlobe of the right ear. And then the thumb of the right hand. And then the big toe of the right foot. But now, 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 why? What's all this? What is all of this? Why a lamb in, 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 in uh, the life of Isaac? And why the lamb on the Passover day? And why the lamb at the time of the cleansing of the leper? Don't leave me now. Leviticus 14, 24, the lamb of the trespass offering. Numbers 28, 4, one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer in the evening, for the morning and evening sacrifice. The prophet gives a little hint, a bit of insight in Isaiah 53, 7, as a lamb to the slaughter. As he looked down and saw through the prophetic telescope, he saw Jesus Christ, and he said, as a lamb to the slaughter. 700 years later, on a dusty road, Deacon Philip, echoes this by using the words of in Acts 8.32, a lamb dumb before the sheriff. Now listen to me carefully. Don't miss this. A lot of you folks have trusted Jesus as a king, but that won't take you to heaven. You've trusted Jesus as a high priest, but that won't take you to heaven. What is it all about? We come to the answer in John 1.29 and 136. A strange but charming preacher, clothed with camel's hair, with a diet of honey and grasshopper, stands on the Jordan banks and shouts as he points to Jesus, The Christ is coming! Jesus is coming! And John the Baptist, the fellow of Jesus, is pointing to him and saying, There comes the hope of the world! He does not stand and say, Behold the King of kings and Lord of lords! Brother, you don't need a king, you need a lamb! He does not say, Behold the Lord of lords! Uh, that's, one, that's one thing about this lordship salvation business. John the Baptist didn't say, Behold the king. You don't get saved by beholding the king. He didn't say, Behold the priest. You don't get saved by beholding the priest. He didn't say, Behold the Lord of Lords. You don't get saved by beholding the Lord of Lords. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. Then in First Peter one nineteen. It says that our Savior was as a lamb without blemish. And then Paul in 1 Corinthians 5, 7 explains it when he says, Christ, our Passover, is offered for us. Christ, our lamb, if you please. I get it. Hey, I get it. I get it now. It's clear. I'm a sinner. I must pay for my sins. I need a sacrifice. I need a substitute. God fulfilled this prophecy of Abraham hundreds and several thousand years ago, and God became flesh and came to the earth and became my Passover and paid the price for my sin. If I trust Him as the Lamb, I can go to heaven. I'm talking to folks today who trusted Jesus. Somebody said, if you'll trust Jesus, you can go to heaven. No, you can't. You trust Him as a king and you'll die and go to hell. You trust Him as a priest, and you'll die and go to hell. You trust Him as your Lord, you'll die and go to hell. You don't need a king, you need a sacrifice. 
Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Don't leave me now. God closes His book in Revelation with mention after mention of this Lamb. I expected Him in the Revelation to come as a king. This is prophecy. This is the story of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Rarely is He mentioned as king in prophecy. Rarely is He mentioned as priest in prophecy. But in Revelation, over and over and over again, the Lamb is mentioned. Why not a king? Because if you're a sinner, you don't need a king, you need a savior. You need a sacrifice. Let me ask you a question this morning. When you, when you walked down the aisle, or when you trusted Christ uh, back down the aisle, did, did, were you, did you understand that you were a sinner? If you didn't, you're not saved. If some soul would have walked up to you and said, if you'll ask Jesus to come in your heart, you can be saved. Now, that's not true. You've got to know that you're a sinner. You've got to know that sinners are the condemnation of an almighty God. You've got to know that Jesus Christ, the virgin-born Son of God, came and lived a perfect life as a lamb without blemish. Only all the liberals that say he was just a good man. Only all the liberals that don't talk about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. He came as a lamb. Did you know that? Is that what you trusted? Did you trust him as a lamb? Oh, I, 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 t I took Jesus in my heart. I let Jesus come into my heart. That is not sufficient, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody would ever walk the streets of heaven who did not realize he was a sinner. Nobody would ever walk the streets of heaven without knowing he was under the condemnation of Almighty God. Nobody would ever walk the streets of heaven without knowing that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, virgin-born, sinless Lamb without blemish, came and went to Calvary. On Calvary's cross, he, as my Lamb, was offered as God's eternal sacrifice. No wonder he said, worthy is the Lamb. Sufficient is the Lamb. Not the Lamb plus baptism. Sufficient is the Lamb. It's not the Lamb plus a good life. Sufficient is the Lamb. It's not the Lamb plus the communion. It's sufficient is the Lamb. It's not the Lamb plus joining a church. Sufficient is the Lamb. I'm saying anybody in this world who realizes he's a sinner or she's a sinner and realizes she's under the condemnation of Almighty God looks and realizes that God came in the flesh in the likeness of sinful flesh and lived a perfect life, and God is my Lamb. Have you trusted Him as your Lamb? Revelation chapter 5. Don't miss this. A book was sealed. This book is the title deed to all redemption. No man could open it. Nobody above the earth, nobody on the earth, nobody beneath the earth could open it. And finally somebody said, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Jesus, not with a crown of, of, of glory on his brow, but the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. And the Lamb came. And the Lamb opened that book. What am I saying? No Lamb, no redemption. Jesus is King, no redemption. Jesus, just as a Savior, but not understanding the consequences of sin, no redemption. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Blessing and honor and power be unto the Lamb. I saw the Lamb open one of the seals. Don't miss it. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 16, you have what we call the sinner's prayer meeting. The unsaved people are crying. They're pleading. They're, they're going to hell, about to be cast into hell. And uh, they said, Oh, rocks and mountains, fall on us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Are you listening? Everybody in hell will go to hell because they did not trust the Lamb. No Lamb, no salvation from hell. No Lamb, hell fire and brimstone forever. No Lamb, eternity without God. Ladies and gentlemen, just like the Father on the 14th of the 10th, the 14th day of the first month, got that Lamb, a male Lamb, without blemish, and offered that blood of that Lamb and sprinkled the doorpost. You take the same thing with the same sobriety that that father had on that April morning, and you stop and realize to ask yourself the question, have I trusted the Lamb? Revelation 7, 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, 
as no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the, the, the Lamb, clothed with white robes. No Lamb, no white robe. No Lamb, no robe of righteousness. Now listen carefully to me, everybody from this corner up here, this corner, listen to me carefully. Your eternity in heaven or the fires of hell does not depend on whether you trust a Jesus or not, but whether you trust Jesus the Lamb. These people say, have you trusted Jesus as your Lord? If that's all you do, you'll burn in hell forever. Didn't say worthy is the priest. Didn't say worthy is the king. Didn't say worthy is the Lord. It said worthy is the Lord. You need a lamb, you're a sinner, and you need a lamb. Revelation 7:10. Salvation to our God and to the Lamb. No lamb, no salvation. Revelation 7:14. Wash their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. No lamb, no washed robes. Revelation 12:11. They overcame him by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. No Lamb, no overcoming Satan. No Lamb, no overcoming the powers of sin. Revelation 13, 8. The Lamb slain before the foundation of the world in the four argument council of eternity. God looked down and saw that you and I were going to be sinners. Listen to me carefully. God looked down and saw that you and I were going to be sinners before there was a world, before there was an earth, before there was an ocean, before there was a river, before there was a tree, before there was a mountain, before there was a lake, before there was a bird, before there was a fish, before there was an animal, before the foundation was laid, God saw that you and I were sinners. And God decided to give us not a king, but a lamb. And you'll never reign with him as king till you trust to him as lamb. There's a big debate these days about the doctrine of repentance. I don't enter into that. The debate, ladies and gentlemen, ought to be the doctrine of depravity and the condemnation of God. Nobody will go to heaven unless he realizes he was a sinner. You walk up to a little child on the street corner and say, would you trust Jesus? He says, yes, that won't do it. That child has got to know he's a sinner. And that child has got to know he's sinned against Almighty God. And that child has got to know that Jesus Christ became his substitute. And that child has got to know that Jesus paid it all. The old account was settled long ago. The Lamb! It's the Lamb! It's the Lamb that saves! You'd think that Revelation would talk about him as the coming king. But in every case, when it shines its spotlight upon the Savior, He's called the Lamb. Revelation 19.7 talks about the marriage of the Lamb. Revelation 19.9 talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. When does that take place? At the rapture. When Jesus comes again. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Jesus is coming again. I said Jesus is coming again. When He comes, the dead in Christ shall be raised, and those who are living in Christ shall rise with them to meet the Lord in the air, and then we'll have the marriage of the Lamb, but no Lamb, no rapture. Trust in his king, you'll be left at the rapture. Trust in his priest, you'll be left at the rapture. Trust in his Lord, you'll be left at the rapture. Even Revelation 19, verses 7 and 9, talking about the marriage of the Lamb, didn't say the marriage of the King of Kings, didn't say the marriage of the Lord of the Lords. The only way to get up in the rapture is by trusting in His Lamb. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, who's all their guilt is saying, You listen to me, and you listen well, for your eternal salvation determines, de depends on the answer to this question. Have you ever trusted Jesus Christ as your Lamb? Revelation 21, 7, 20, 20, 27. 
they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. It doesn't say King's book of life. Lamb's book of life. It doesn't say High Priest's book of life. Lamb's book of life. It doesn't say Lord's book of life. Lamb's book of life. That means nobody will have his name written in the book of life unless he's trusted the Lamb. I'm worried. I'm worried about this flippant soul winning. I'm worried about walking up to somebody and saying, Would you trust Jesus as your Savior? And they say, Yes, I would. You say you'll go to heaven. That's not true at all. You've got to have a lamb. And the lamb is the, the lamb that is a sac God's accepted sacrifice that enables you to have your name in the book. And you can get on your knees and say, I take you as Lord of my life. And not one letter of your name is written in the book of life. I take you as the king of my life. Not one letter of your name is written in the book of life. You get on your knees and say, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm lost under the condemnation of Almighty God. And I know that God himself became a lamb and paid the penalty. The lamb without blemish, the male lamb without blemish, and paid the penalty for my sin. I trust the lamb. And that moment, your name is registered in the book of life forever. Revelation 22.1 The river of life that proceedeth out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. To the end of Revelation, he's the Lamb. We talk about him coming back as King of Glory. Coming back as King of, King of Glory gives him the right to rule. But your right to rule with him is because you trusted the Lamb. The Lamb. It says, Revelation 22, 3, The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. No wonder God inspired the great apostle John on Patmos Island, exiled. No wonder he inspired him to say, Worthy is the Lamb. Sufficient is the Lamb. Tell the priest to put his... Holy Eucharist aside, sufficient is the Lamb. Tell the priest to put clothes forever to his confessional booth. Sufficient is the Lamb. Tell the, tell the, the Seventh-day Adventist to quit trusting his seventh-day salvation. Sufficient is the Lamb. Tell the person trusting his own good works. Sufficient is the Lamb. Thank God today from the first mention of, of the Lamb in Genesis 22:7. Unto the last mention of the Lamb in Revelation 22 3. Praise God! Worthy is the Lamb! Worthy is the Lamb! Worthy is the Lamb! Sufficient is the Lamb that was slain. Would you bow your heads, please, for prayer? Our Heavenly Father.